Hey everybody, welcome to Warrior DNA. I'm Larry Wallace and this is Stacy Wallace. Happy Sunday, good to see you guys. Hello everybody. <laughs> you never know what I'm gonna do. Never know what kind of that's like accent somebody, you're gonna yeah, have. Yeah, that's somebody who's very confused about their dialect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> good morning, afternoon. Oh my goodness, I've had a wonderful Wallace nap today. Warrior Did I say good morning too? I don't know, it's just because we just woke up. <laughs> I'm used to doing them in the mornings because we do our show every morning. If you haven't ever seen um, what we do during the week, M Nation TV, you can actually see all of our videos on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com forward slash EM Nation TV. Go and subscribe. Click the little bell so that you can get alerted when we're on every day, 9 a.m. Of course, on Sundays, the Saturdays we take off. That's our Sabbath from 5 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's 5 p.m. So today is Sunday at 5 p.m. and every Sunday at 5 p.m. we do Warrior DNA where we talk about what it means to have the DNA of God's spirit. Not necessarily the DNA of the world. Today's topic, no different. We are talking about sudden abundant blessings overtaking you. What does that mean? Today we had an amazing service, had a guest speaker. Well, the speaker that doesn't speak. Yeah. He was... doesn't have a voice to speak, so he has to whisper and it amazing yeah it, it, honestly uh it, it took a minute to get used to the way he talked because they had to turn his mic up a lot because he has to it's it's just a, just above a whisper but man what an anointed man of god we're going to talk a little bit about it but people who are watching live were like turn him up we can't hear him and people were like um that is up <laughs> yeah it's all the way up but it was amazing and we're going to talk a little bit about that here in just a minute hey everyone that's tapping in we love seeing you guys pop on we are talking about sudden abundant blessings overtaking us. What does that mean? I think the word blessing has gotten really distorted because a lot of people think that that means that I'm going to be, if, if I have money, then I sh that, that tells the world that I am tight with God. Yeah. Uh, but what does it really mean? And how do you tap into the abundant blessings of God? Maybe you're in a place where you say, you know, I have been waiting and waiting and waiting and praying and praying and praying for a long time. And it just feels like I'm in a pressure cooker and I am ready to get out. Well, we're gonna talk about that today because you're in the right place at the right time. And today you happen to be with the right people because we're going to give some insight to that. It's gonna be you know, powerful. You know, that reminds me, um, not to derail you. You're talk touching my bottom. I know, but it, I was just thinking, it reminds me of whenever you were pregnant with Alexia, Oh, yes. And, and so she, the due date, believe it or not, guys, was um, September 11th of 2000. So the day that, that the Trade Center... Um, was that day I was about to bust and I'm like, oh, please don't let it be today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so she was due that day. And of course, she didn't give birth. And so it was like another, what, week? What, what? That felt like seven years. Oh, my goodness. And, and so Peyton was delivered early. And so I just remember you thinking to yourself, oh God, please deliver me from this. It was, you know, ladies, when your nose starts to swell out and your belly button's already out, it's like, I'm done. Like yeah. we're so ready to have this baby, but there's always a reason for the delay. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about that's a great analogy because God never does anything that's not on time. And he who began a good work in you is, is faithful, faithful to complete it. And there's a time under heaven for everything. Time to laugh, time to cry, time for peace, a time for war. When you understand, and that's what EM Nation stands for, the truth of God's word, you learn how to settle into a different existence than what the world puts pressure on you to perform at. In fact, last Friday, we talked about what it is to be the liberate, a woman liberated or this new womanhood in that's being described in the world today is it god's best for woman is beast mode boss mode grind i'm gonna go is that god's best or can we find a secret inside of the word of god that allows you to have peace and profits mm. that allows you to have what i would call biblical womanhood so we t started on it last week and tomorrow morning at 9 a.m we're going to continue that message part two Part two. So we covered the first two points and we'll, we'll, we'll touch on them tomorrow morning. But tomorrow we're going to cover the last two. And the last one is so powerful. I believe even in my years as being a corporate and executive coach, uh, being able to talk to the lives of great CEOs, men and women, 
This last question I asked every single leader. I can remember sitting across from a multi, multi, multi millionaire who was wanting to know, okay, so what, what am I supposed to be doing with this money? Mm. And it wasn't about money at all. And my question to him was, what are you most passionate about? And that led into what the last question we're going to talk about tomorrow. So make sure you tap back into that because it's going to be powerful. But today we want to talk about this season that seems like it's extended in your life. A little bit about what the gentleman talked about today. But many of you, maybe you saw uh, yesterday, we did a big reveal of something that we have been working on, which is called our Cinderella Suite. Now, we have for years, since 1994, God gave me a precious, wonderful end of that year, beginning of 95 vision. Um, I went to Trinidad, and when I was over in Trinidad, I was doing a concert. I was a recording artist back then, a Christian recording artist. I had already released my first CD in 1994. And I was coming back from Trinidad. I was getting ready to sign a record deal with a big record company. Um, and when I came back, when I was over there, uh, and I've told you guys this story before, a little girl came forward. I'd never done an altar call, never asked people to pay, pray a prayer of repentance. She came forward and had a gun, was going to kill herself. And then, first, I'd go home and kill her parents and then kill herself. She had been raped like consistently every single week practically daily. They had multiple men that lived in the house. And so she was done with it. She was 16 years old. That day she laid down her gun, accepted Jesus and heard my story about suicidal depression when I was young and all that and said, if you can make it, I can make it. So when I came back, I was like, I didn't want to just be a singer. I didn't want to just sell records anymore. Even if it was Christian music, I felt like God had called me to something uniquely different. And at that time, I had five and a half octaves, so the voice was what it needed to be. I had the, the record deal in place, but something on the inside of me was saying, I've got something more for you, if you'll let me. So when I came back, I got gas at a gas station. And back then, back in the day, this is in Canada, for filling up with gas, this will date me, you, you would fill up for gas and you would choose if you wanted self-serve or full service. <laughs> like some guy would really come out. And, and you actually... know, there are still uh, places like that. Like I remember up in, when we lived up in Washington, there was a couple of gas stations that were full service or self-service. So, Very few. <laughs> so that's the, where we were. And for filling up with gas, if you went into full service, you got a free gift. Sometimes it was plates and sometimes it was cool coffee mugs. Well, this day it was your choice of a free Walt Disney book. And I had always dreamed of being Cinderella. I was a tomboy, so I would never, in fact, in, in school musicals, I got picked to be the ugly stepsister. <laughs> little scarring there. Um, <laughs> but Still a little bitter about that. Yeah. <laughs> I had the pictures of that too. I was Anastasia. <laughs> Anyhow, I picked Cinderella and I went in and you also got a free car wash. So I went in and got a car wash. And as I'm in the car wash, I'm reading this Cinderella book and instantly like this story came to me as I'm reading it, that this is a twisted, perverted version of the real story of Cinderella. Cinder means I lived in the ashes. Mm -hmm. Cinderella, that was her, why, why they called her Cinderella, because she lived in the basement in the ashes or in the attic in ashes. But God said, Stacy, I am, there is no fairy godmother, but I am the God in whom all things are possible. I'm still in the business of making dreams come true. I've called you to help restore, give them beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair, which is Isaiah 61. And so as I'm sitting there, this song started flowing through my spirit and I wrote the entire song. It's a six minute story song. I wrote the entire song in 12 minutes. You can see it on Spotify, on iTunes and all that, or you can go to YouTube and watch the video. It's called Cinderella, There is Greatness in You. So, so I'm gonna, just a little pause on the story, okay? So today in church, this is gonna blow your mind. This blew my mind. So we, we've been going to our church since the very, very first day that it started. And um, there is a couple there, Steve and Lisa Lyman. And let me just say this, no one really knows that story because all they see is, oh look, it's what Larry and Stacy are doing. They don't know the length of time and the history from when the Cinderella vision and song started in 1995. <laughs> How long are you willing? We were like five to... years old back then. <laughs> yeah, five. 
How long are you willing to wait for the manifestation of God to finish what he began in you? So go ahead. So, so Steve loves Steve. Steve comes up and he has a cassette tape, uh, the original cassette tape of Stacy's Cinderella. Cassette the tape. The cassette tape. Like the original artwork and everything. I, I, I mean, right as soon as I saw it, I'm like, hey, you have that. <laughs> I mean, we don't even have any more of those. It was so like, how just, did you get that? Like, yeah. we can't even get those. Nobody, first off, we, we've who re holds on to cassette tapes? I know. So we've redone that and put it in a CD format, new graphics and all that kind of stuff. Oh, there she goes. So anyway, so Steve walks up to me. He's holding the cassette tape and he opens it up, pulls out the, the, the J card, the jacket, and he, he shows me, oh, this, is, this is sad, he shows me the um, J card and I can't read it because the words are too small. So I literally have to get my phone and magnify the words so I can actually read it. And his name is on the inside of it he as one of our singers. He background vocals. She sang the background. We had what? no idea. Mind blown. So what, what, what threw Think him about off. how... God had to switch, shift the universe. Number one, that he would be one of the background singers on that back in 1995 in Tulsa, Oklahoma. How many places we've lived since then? Like, and how, oh how no. now to get us back in the same church to where he would find the cassette tape, have had the cassette tape, pulls it out, and we're like, well, what? And then he says, you're not going to believe this. He says, so I was cleaning out a closet and I thought I saw somebody post Stacy Michaels and I was like, wait a minute, that name sounds familiar. So I went and I found this cassette tape and he said, here's what's crazy. And he opens it up. I'm like, <laughs> God, now there's significance and why that is important to us today yes. as a little mile marker for God saying, I got you. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got the universe. In fact, I'm a, I, I, have, I have control of every pawn, every queen, every knight. I have control of the entire board, and I can shift things into place on your behalf at any given time. Here's the CD that we have today, and we redid the CD. That one he had was like pastel pink and blue. It was, it, I, I just have to say, though, what? go God. I mean, how, like, we've lived all over the uh, United States since then. He, but like Stacy and I and, and Steve and his wife, Lisa, lived up in Oklahoma at the time. How did, how did we all end up here at the same church however many years later? I mean, Well, oh, and what's amazing blown. is this week. So yesterday we did the big reveal on something that's been in our heart for a long, long time, but we weren't really thinking back 1995 by any means. I was thinking like, you know, we started in women 2017, 2018 is we really... 2007 is we put it into a nonprofit status mm. and then we shelved it all those years. I went back into corporate America and I'm, you know, in the boss mode grind. And then God calls us out and uh, 2018, we feel like we're going to pull it off the shelf because we really have this heart to help women and girls who are in, who are coming out of dire situations, some of life's most difficult challenges. And then we are in the season where we're like, we'll do anything for you, God, anything for you, God. So we're giving and giving and giving. And then it gets to 2000, end of 2017, you know, literally God will do anything for you. And it's kind of like the rich young ruler. He's like, well, I've done that. And Jesus says, well, did you feed the poor? Feed the poor? Well, I've done that. And I've done that. And I've been kind. And, I've, and he listed off all these things. And basically I did all that. And then Jesus says, because we had done all that. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember one of my bonus checks was $10,000 and I came home to you and I said, I think I'm supposed to, we're supposed to give it all. <laughs> and we gave all of it. And it happened to be the last day that I was with that company, that was the bonus check they gave me. And so we didn't know where our next check was gonna come from, but we felt give it all. So we did. So then we get to 2017, we're cranking along and again, okay, you've done all those things, but would you give up everything and give everything to the poor? So we start gradually doing that. And then we get to this place, literally last month, where we're going, okay, I feel like we've given everything except our house. And maybe we're supposed to put the house up for sale. And then all of a sudden, I feel like Holy Spirit says, well, there's still more you can give. And I'm like, okay, without giving the house, what is that? Because 
we got to put the house up for sale. So we've got, we're painting walls and we're fixing things to get it ready to put up. And he said, you have a room, a room. We've got a 19 foot storage room. And so in our heart, we're like, all right, you can have the room. So if you saw yesterday, we converted this 19 foot room. And again, not because we're like, oh, that's so good. That's so kind. It is good and kind, but we're just obeying God. It's like 19 by 10. And so it's a 19 foot by 10 foot room. Mm -hmm. Yvonne Main and Inside Out Ministries, Lori comes over and they help. They bring all the, uh, they brought some new beds and, and mirrors and furnishings. And we completely tricked out that room. If you guys want to see it, just go to Facebook there, scroll down and you'll see. It's the first Cinderella suite. Now the big vision is to have the Cinderella castle, the, the redemption ranch where we bring in women and girls and men and ropes course and all that. And we believe we're gonna have a lot of acreage to be able to make that happen. And that's gonna somehow get us that ranch. But until we have that ranch, what are we willing to give? Give what you've got. So we have this room. And so here's the point of that. So. We give the big reveal yesterday, and then Steve Scott says, I found this cassette tape. Steve. Steve. Mm -hmm. What did I say? You said Steve, then Scott. Steve. Scott Matthews is the Scott um, Matthews was the producer. It. Yeah, he, he produced it. So, as if God was saying, just wanted to say thank you, and just wanted you to know that I'm along for the ride. In <laughs> fact, I'm not just along for the ride, I'm actually guiding the trip. I, I, and this I, 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 1995 guys all the way to today it's just honestly just the it just god is so good i mean i'm just telling you god shows himself and you can say that's coincidence you can say whatever you want to but i believe god is in this i do too and 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 the fact that he's given us all these women that are around us now in em women and it just so happens that we have this room and every week and online and on the groups around the United States, we have women who don't have a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. We have women who are like, if I could just get ahead of the eight ball and just, just, but, but I don't have a place to go. Well, they can't go to the, you're thinking, we'll just go to a shelter. Well, shelters, believe it or not, are not always the best place for people to go, especially if they've got kids. Mm -hmm. So here we have room in our home and it's not being used and, and it's already convicting people that are seeing it they're going like i want to do that we've got a room in our house so all of that to say we get this cassette shown to us like god saying i'm with you and then this message today mm. and so this message again the speaker that spoke this morning he for 27 years he has lived what he says is a prison of silence because his vo he doesn't have a voice Mm -hmm. And something happened to him 27 years ago that he lost his voice. So all he has is a whisper. So it's very difficult to hear him. So they have to really amplify his whisper in church. And he speaks this morning. He doesn't even have to talk about his story because 27 years of silence. You think you've been waiting a long time. He says, I am expecting full, not just restoration of my voice, but full. What's it called? Oh, uh, restitution. Are you listening to me? Yes. You're so into the I, story. I was just reading Kevin's statement there. And I, was... I don't know. What is it? <laughs> restitution. Rest restitution. I want to read this scripture. This is what he read today. And it was so beautiful as we're telling this story. So God has given us our first Cinderella to be in the Cinderella suite. He's given us actually a lot of them. But we've got the first one who moved in this weekend, Christina. God is doing amazing things in her life. I can't wait for you to meet her, but it, watch how fast God's work. Now she has been, her background is when we did our intake, we have an application process intake. We went through all the things she's been through. And I'm like, girl, I didn't know you did that. Wow, oh my goodness, that happened? You've been jail. Oh, I mean, we're talking, the girl has this unbelievable story and here she is in a place where it's her time. What happens is God not only gives her a home, but God gives her a home with a family that is wrapping her, their arms around her with a godly man that she can see in daily operation what it looks like to have a godly marriage, a beautiful now suite, not just a bedroom, but a beautiful suite that's been decked out for her. 
she comes and she's got a tattoo that represents her past. And uh, we've got women that comes, you know, all kinds of dark tattoos. And, you know, you see some women that have the barcode from trafficking or maybe it's just something that represents witchcraft. And so we said, God, we really want to redeem those tattoos. I mean, they, they're, we're cleaning them up on the inside. We want to get that skin clean up. Today at church, Truth for Tat is being born. Mm -hmm. And that's another ministry of EM Women is Pastor John Brockman, who is the associate pastor at Dwell Church, has found us a tattoo artist that has agreed that he's going to transform her dark tattoo of her past and give it new meaning for the future. And so all these things are lining up and it seems all of a sudden like it's sudden, that sudden abundant blessings are overtaking her. Mm -hmm. like house and home and she just got a job that's the best job she's ever had and it's got benefits and 401k and i mean boom 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 christina's world just like cinderella is going mm -hmm. and god when when it's time god all of a sudden and if you look in the bible and suddenly and quickly and that's what we're praying for you today sudden abundant blessings are overtaking we call that sabatu S-A-B-A-T-U, sudden abundant blessings over T, taking you, Sabatu. When that happens in your life, you know that you've had an encounter with God and God suddenly just turned the chess table and now he's in an aggressive move for you. And here's the scripture. You want to read it? Yeah. You want me to read it? No, go ahead and read it. Okay. Luke 18, Jesus is telling all these parables to his disciples and if you go 17, Luke 17, Luke 16, 15, 14, you'll see Jesus is using miracles and parables to teach this motley crew of guys that are traveling, and now women, that are traveling with him, and he's parable after parable after parable after parable, and then he'd heal some people, parable, 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 heal a bunch of people, parable, parable, parable. The parable of the persistent widow, and what he was talking about, and I speak this to those of you right now, whether you're in a widow state that your husband has passed away, or whether you're in a state of abandonment, where someone has abandoned you, or friends have abandoned you, or, or bankers have abandoned you, or you feel like you are destitute, this word is for you. Chapter 18, then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and never, never give up. Right where you're at, say, always pray and never, never, never give up. He goes on to say, here's the parable. In a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. In other words, he was just a corrupt judge. Could have cared less what God thought. And there was a widow in that same town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. So now obviously as a widow, she brought, her husband probably died and probably left her some money and somebody is now trying to take it from her. So she's trying to quickly go to the judge and say, rescue me, help me. The plea was grant me justice. But for some time, the judge refused. He just kept saying, go away, go away. Till finally, he said to himself, even though I don't care about God, I don't fear God, and I really don't care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice. Not because I care about her, just so that she will be quiet. <laughs> so that she will eventually, won't eventually come and attack me. Like she was obviously getting more and more passionate of the way she was pressing in saying, give me justice, give me justice. This is what's happened to me. This is what they've done to me. This is how my adversary is trying to steal from me. And she's going at him and going at him and go. I've known mamas who have laid on the court steps day and night, how the news media have come and said, this lady is so impassioned. She is not willing to leave, leave the courtroom until the judge hears her case. And that's exactly what's happening here. And the Lord said, Jesus said, this is red writing, by the way. Anytime you see red writing, that means Jesus is talking. And the Lord went on with the story and said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night and he keeps putting them off? What? 
Think about this. They're crying out day and night. He's saying, even a just judge, let alone an unjust judge that's putting you off, will not an, a just judge be listening, even though it feels like he's putting you off. Do you feel like God has been putting you off and putting you off and putting you off and sustaining and making it a longer and like, think about Joseph. I mean, the guy is sold to slavery. He's given this dream, this vision, like 1995, we're going to have Cinderella Castle and we're going to have all the extension ministries. And it feels like forever he's sold into slavery. Next thing you know, he's in prison. He's falsely accused for 10 years. He's sitting in that prison with dung. There's no toilet. So they're just like right there. It is a disgusting place. But look at what God does. He sees you in the dung. He's with you in those prison moments. When you're sitting there crying out to God, don't stop. Be like this widow, because here's what happens. I tell you, he will see that they get justice and justice quickly, mm -hmm. suddenly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find that kind of faith on earth? And I want to ask you this. Maybe you've been in a place where you say, you know what, I've been crying out to God. And it just seems like he's not answering. It seems like he's not hearing. Or maybe things haven't gone your way. Or maybe you feel like you're at the bottom of the totem pole. You feel like you're destitute and everything is stacked against you. Don't give up. Go back to the first part of that chapter where it says, Then Jesus told disciples to show them that they should always pray and never give up. Why? Because God has a sudden, abundant blessing that's going to overtake you. Keep on keeping on. That's what my mama said before she passed away. Baby, keep on keeping on. Don't you give up, let up, shut up until good Lord takes you up. Keep praying. Pray. Push means pray until something happens. Do not give up. And here's what happens when that takes place. Not only did the woman get restoration, but she also gets restitution. Think about this for, Jer for, for uh, Joseph. So Joseph, to restore Joseph would have been just, just get him out of Potiphar's control, get him out of, out of prison, prison. and mm -hmm. let him have freedom. That would be restoration. But restitution means that God is going to not only give you the restoration of what you're asking freedom from, but restitution is all those years of suffering, all those years of opposition, all of those years where the locusts have stolen, all of those years where you've been pushed down and dragged down, all of those, you don't just want restoration. You want restitution. And I know for us, we have had companies that have gone under. We have had people who have done us wrong. We have had people come directly against us, people who've cost us millions and millions of dollars. I'm just telling you, God is not a God to say, oh, well, I'm just going to restore you. I'm going to give you your job. I'm going to give you your company. I'm going to give you that dream of that ministry. No, I don't want restoration. I don't want Cinderella Ministries the way I dreamed about it in 1995. Right. I want restitution. Mm -hmm. I want all the years, all the women, and not just for me, because I'm no longer in a place of hurting, and you're no longer in a place of mourning. We're in a place now where we want to get people out so they can be in a place of victory. And here's the thing, like there's time that happens. Like there's a long time since 1995. It doesn't seem like that long when you look back, but as you're going through it, there seems like a lot of time that mm -hmm. goes by. But here's the thing is I, I, I will say this, never, ever, ever has Stacy wavered on that dream, ever. And here's, you're gonna have times where you're gonna have opposition come against you. You're going to have time where people doubt or people will say, oh, that's just a dream or whatever it may be. Don't stop. And the bigger the dream, the crazier you seem. Mm. That rhymes. <laughs> the bigger the dream, the crazier it seems. Our dream mm -hmm. is not a two acre dream. Mm -hmm. Our dream actually isn't even what I'm believing for a hundred acre dream. Our dream is a global galactic dream to where what God has us create here, we do it, it with business acumen that we've been given like a, like a McDonald's and we franchise these Cinderella castles, these redemption ranches all over the world, giving people, ordinary people like you and I and Larry, an opportunity to be the hands of justice on behalf of the Father, to take people like Christina, our first 
Cinderella up there in that suite and to see how quickly God's gotten her a job. Now God's got her relationships. She's getting benefits and settlements. I believe she's going to get estates and inheritances. She's getting her tattoo redeemed. I mean, just one thing after another, after another. That's what God has for you. When he says now, mm -hmm. I want you to get more than restoration. And that's why you don't give up in your prayers. You don't want restoration. You want redemption and you want restitution. Mm, that's good. Whew. good I, I got up and I started. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we do when we come against all of the years of praying and feeling like it hasn't happened yet. You put on your gloves and fight like a kingdom fighter. Yes. Let's pray together. All right, Father, we just thank you, God, for today. And thank Lord, you, Jesus. we thank you, Father Jesus. God, that you're not only restoration, you not only Jesus. provide restoration, but God, you also provide restitution. And so, God, we just accept that. And I know, Lord, that there is people watching right now that have dreams and visions of something that you've placed in their heart. It may have been something that you placed in their heart last night. It may have been something that you placed in their heart 25 years ago. Mm. But, God, I thank you, Lord, that it will come to pass. Sudden, abundant blessings. blessings overtaking them daily in Jesus' name. So we just thank you, Father God, that we just receive that. And God, we apply it to our life. And as we go forth in this week, Lord, we just thank you, God, that we pray blessings over everybody who's watching. Mm -hmm. Lord, whatever their needs may be. Lord, I, I lift up, uh, I saw Sonia Himes um, just a minute ago post about her son. God, we just thank you, Father thank God, you, for Jesus. restoration in his life and his body right now in the name of Jesus. And Jesus. we celebrate the fact that he's able to eat now. And God, thank you, Father God, that there's complete restoration in her son's body in Jesus' name. So God, I pray over that for everybody, Lord, that whatever their need, financial, Finances, health, whatever it may be, God, I thank you, Lord, that you're in the business of providing miracles. And God, I thank you, Lord, that you just bless everybody in Jesus' name. Amen. And we celebrate the salvations of last week, the baptisms of last week, the people who were healed of, what was it, eight or nine slip discs instantly healed. The suddenly, you've been praying and you've been praying and you've been praying. When God does a suddenly in your life, you will know you've had an encounter with God. Kevin says, bearing one another freedom. I, I mean, one another's burdens. Pardon. I agree. That's what it is to open up your home to the poor, to the widow, to extend your hand to the needy. We're going to talk again tomorrow. Ladies, what is womanhood? What is biblical womanhood? And what is female liberation all about? Not only the worldview, but we're going to look at the word view of what is a true liberated woman of God look like tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. We encourage you to share this video with others. I'm sure they need the encouragement and then be with us tomorrow at 9 a.m. or go to uh, our new YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TV. That's E-M Nation TV. Go ahead and binge watch. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Have a great week this week. We look forward to seeing you again tomorrow morning. Bye -bye. Love you. Bye-bye.